I have less than a month left before I'm on an airplane with these two trucks. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Road to Scale Nationals. In this series, Matt from the Scale Builders Guild and myself are building trucks to take to go compete in the Sorka Scale Nationals, which will be happening in Leesburg, Alabama in less than a month, as we said. Uh, time is ticking. Now, it's been a couple of weeks since my last update and during that time frame, I lost about four days because I had an out of town trip and that was over a weekend. So a lot of productive hours lost, but we made up for it. Still got a bunch done on both of these trucks. If you haven't caught any of the previous episodes, good idea to go check them out because these trucks have come a long way and be good to cover that. You can also go check out the previous five episodes of Matt's as well. And I'll link to where you can find all of those in the description below. But let's jump into this week's content. So, so the class two, as you can see, I do have the carbon fiber body sitting on top of the chassis finally. If you hadn't seen previously, this is an actual hand laid up carbon fiber body. It's, you know, true carbon fiber, extra rigid, and it gets hard body points for Sorka events because it meets the minimum thickness needed for the Sorka rule set. There's a couple of little spots that didn't, but I was able to just beef that up with some of the carbon fiber resin that I've been using for the forged parts so that it meets just about anywhere that I can find to measure. Good news there. In the past, I had talked that I wanna make sure that it's well supported because even though it's carbon fiber and that's very strong, it is, there's not a lot supporting a lot of this. And if it took a big tumble, I was worried about crushing the roof. So I wanted to build an internal cage and I've started that. As you can see here, we've got the uh, start of the roll cage in place. Now I did decide to go with titanium to fabricate this cage as well. I was kind of up in the air if I was gonna use DOM steel tubing or go with titanium. I ended up going titanium. I made a number of 3D printed prototypes until I nailed down the actual shape and tube structure that I wanted for the overall shape of this thing. But the reason I was being so picky for that is that I wanted the top of the roof and the A pillars to closely match the inside shape of this body so that I could get everything as well supported as possible. I'll probably take some extra steps beyond that as well but that's for a later date. Since I had to make the titanium fit to a body, I had to do a little bit of extra work and then making sure everything was perfect was a little bit more difficult. After I was done, I had the legs of this titanium just kind of a excess length. I didn't really know exactly where it needed to be so the body could sit down onto the chassis properly and then still meet up to the roof. So I started working on my sliders that you see here. Now these are 3D printed at this point and they're very rough. Uh, the whole point of this was that I created some holes here at the corners that the cage could slide into. And then you'll see that there's a couple of three millimeter screws on the outside. Those were so that I could get the cage in place and then tighten the screws down, check the fitment, go back, adjust, go back, adjust the whole deal. That way I know exactly the height that I need this cage to be to meet this, to sit on the chassis properly and just kind of step through this gently in a way that I was pretty confident I would end up with the proper result. This is not the final design of the slider. This was mainly done for these capture points on the roll cage. Now that I know that I've got the height of this cage determined and the positioning, everything like that is done and confirmed and set, then I'm going to design up some plates that will connect the roll cage to each other as well as provide some mounting points. And I'll tie that back in towards a more slimmed down slider mount. It'll make this cleaner, a little bit more rigid, give me a benefit of being able to do a number of things that we'll get into at a later date as well. While fabricating the cage up, I did use the new tubing notcher that I designed. This uses a Makita trim router and a little rotary table, some 3D printed parts and some laser cut parts that I sent to Send Cut Send as well so that I could have a very exact tubing notcher. I know my angles, I just dial it in on the rotary table, look at the angle indicator, put it through the metal bushing on the slide to keep everything nice and aligned. And it just gives me perfect tubing notches. Now we need to notch this end because I've cut it to length. I've got a couple of dimensions or of uh, the angles here. 
So it's actually going to be the the 90 degree, you know, inverse of this one. So it's like 25.24 because that says 64.76. So we're going to set the notcher to 25 and change. So right about there. So the degrees go around the bottom here and there's a little indicator mark right there. So that should give us the perfect degree. This is a burr wheel and a Makita router and a notcher that I designed. And we should be set to go. I've got this plugged in and it's on a momentary switch. It's gonna be hard to see that, but the notch is just right on center and uh, at the angle we specified. It's overkill, it's excessive. It's got a momentary foot switch so that it's only activated when I need it to be. It's awesome. It's much faster than doing it by hand with a file, especially on titanium, and it makes wildly fast work of steel. So overall, super happy with the addition of my new tool that I built. I do have one modification that I need to make to that before I call it finalized, but Beyond that, still pretty pleased with myself. Now the cage work is not done. There's a couple of things that I need to add. I do plan to make this a four seat interior. Since there's an extra area back here where this would be like an extended cab, I plan to add rear seats to this and that is for Sorca scale points. Sorca gives you additional scale points for having extra rows of seating. So I'm gonna put those in there for that reason. But to do that, I need to add an extra down bar. I need to have crossbars, uh, you know, for each row, little things like that, but much easier to put in place than the initial shape. I'll also put in a dash bar and just some little things. I also got some 1 8 inch titanium rod and I can use this in places as well if I like, if I wanna just get those bars in place, but also cut weight significantly. Also on the sliders while designing this, I wanted to keep as much clearance underneath as possible, but I also wanted to keep my battery as low as possible. I previously had it in this little cradle area of the brazen scale chassis that I'm running and I wanted to just kind of keep it there. So I actually notched the slider around it so that I was able to get both of the things accomplished that I was after. Battery still as low as possible. It's a little 1300 milliamp 3S and uh, the slider still about as minimal as I could get it. When I'm finishing the cage, I do plan to also add some tabs to mount the interior base. And I need to figure out exactly how I'm going to secure the body to the cage and the chassis while still making things reasonably accessible. I've got some things to work out there. I halfway expect to basically leave the battery in place most of the time. So if the battery is a pain to get to, I'm okay with that. I can charge it in the vehicle during the comp. So I'm not too worried about that. One day things like that, not a big deal. I'm not gonna be running tons and tons of packs through it. One method that I am thinking about doing is adding some tabs to the inside of the cage and then adding a roof rack on the uh, top of the body here out of something like a very thin titanium to help sandwich everything down in place. Uh, I'd probably do some sort of backing on the inside to help you know, spread the load out. This would also help transfer forces from you know, the actual body into the cage. I, my main concern is these A pillars. And I'll probably add mounts elsewhere also, but again, just I wanna get this thing well supported and I wanna try and attach it and spread the load where I do as best as possible so that I don't destroy what is a not inexpensive body. I have started the design of the interior, but I haven't got all that far. It's gonna be much more basic. I'm gonna put tabs onto the cage, as I mentioned, and it'll have a very flat floor that the seats will all mount to. The dash will be separate, likely vacuum formed, and I'll keep it just minimal and lightweight I'll try and not let myself go too wild in that respect. We're gonna get the points and move on to the best of my ability. And last thing in regards to the body, I'm still contemplating cutting the rear of the body out for like a drop bed. It looks pretty good with the whole, you know, back covered, but it's not my favorite. 
if I leave it like this, I may come up with a simple roll bar or something maybe made out of that eighth inch titanium rod and mount it to some plates that I can use again to sandwich and then mount the body onto the chassis in a rigid fashion. Playing around with some things, I think a simple roll bar back here, a, a main hoop and then just two tie backs would look good, but up for uh, suggestions if you guys have other ideas. But I think that does it as far as progress on this truck goes. Okay, the class one back here on the bench. I have not got more of the carbon parts done yet, which is concerning me, but I have made progress on the molds and I've actually already started printing some of the more difficult ones. Last week I discussed the titanium and aluminum panels that I was having cut at Send Cut Send and I do have the under hood one installed already. Also our titanium grill. But under the hood here, you will see the windowed panel with the stainless steel stamped mesh inserts in place. I think it looks much better than it did before. The, the all solid area was just, it looked like a little much and it felt like it needed something and I'm glad that I went this route. I think that it, it gives it a little something extra. Now I have not installed the inner fender well on the passenger side. You can see it's still just the black acrylic in this uh, version, but on the other side here, you can see that I do have the aluminum one installed. Now, I don't have the mesh inserts installed yet. I did 3D print the stamps for those. So all I need to do is trim and stamp and then install them. The installation is what takes the longest time. I need to disassemble a bunch of it so I can get into it. I need to permanently affix them to the panels, the whole deal. I'm waiting to do that until some of the other things arrive because I really want to only disassemble the, the whole thing one more time. And that's asking a lot and I'm going to have to kind of push it until I'm down to the last minutes because uh, there's a lot of things that have to go right for all of that to be able to be done. Nothing like waiting until the last minute for sure. As I mentioned, when I had those pieces laser cut, I also had a titanium grill laser cut. And I think that it looks pretty good. I think it's gonna add a little bit, of, you know, something extra to the front end of this. And being that it is titanium and I decided to make my front bumper out of titanium, I think that I'm going to weld the grill directly to the bumper mounts, which will ease some of my other headaches as well because I hadn't really made provisions to mount the grill yet. I was just it's like, I'm gonna cross that bridge when I get there. But I kept getting to it and then taking a turn because I was like, I still don't know how I'm gonna do that. So welding it directly to the bumper supports is gonna be much easier. I've got bumper plates that I had laser cut on each side of the chassis. I had to make these specifically for uh, the shape of the chassis because I cut the chassis off so much that there was no support holes or mounting holes left to use. So I came up with some specific designs and got those cut and put in place here. Now you will also see that I've got the start of my front bumper. Sorka rules state that the front bumper has to stick out to the front of the tires. And this is just past, it's probably maybe even a quarter inch past, which is further than it should go. I probably should have, you know, tried to tuck it in a little bit more, but you know, it is what it is. Now, this is just the center section of the bumper. The bumper also has to be as wide as the windshield. So currently this is not that wide, but with the widest point of the windshield, I only need to go out just past the corner of these front fenders. So I'm gonna add a couple of more pieces that kind of flow off of the main hoop into there to create that full width bumper that I need. While I'm at it, that's when the eighth inch rod will come into play because I also plan to make a bit of a hood guard to help protect the front top side of that hood. It also gives you scale points for an extra bonus. Currently the front of the bumper here is just two tubes that are open and would or could likely hang up on things. So I am going to plate between them. I've got some 0.5 millimeter and some one millimeter titanium sheet. I'll cut the piece as needed, fill in and weld it in place just to help give myself a little bit of deflection, make sure everything 
flows as nice as possible. I am a complete beginner welder as far as titanium goes. Uh, I learn a little bit each time. Anytime I start to possibly cut a bit of a corner with my prep, it is absolutely noticeable. And uh, I have to just slow myself down and tell myself to do it right. It makes a huge difference with titanium. It's way different than with working with steel. And more titanium talk, I did decide to also swap out all of the links. These are the incision titanium links. These are the incision portal set for the, the VS410 uh, Ultra. Titanium links all the way around. I think that I possibly swapped out the Panhard drag link because of the uh, difference of the front axles, but the very, very little difference as far as that goes. With all of the titanium that I was already putting into this vehicle, Having a stainless steel link set on when a titanium one was available seemed silly. Next, let's talk about the windshield. Now, this was something that I overcomplicated, but still got it done. It didn't take me that long. Now, I obviously had the size since I had the shape that I designed already. So I basically made myself a template in CAD that I could use to cut on my vinyl cutter to make myself a stencil for the black outline. Now. I was kind of worried, I'm terrible with stickers, just like painting. So I was worried about being able to make that mask and put it in there centered on a piece that I cut out. So what I decided to do was make that stencil just the area that I wanted to paint black. And then it had a couple little registration marks that I put into place as well. So I cut it all in one big vinyl mask basically, and then stuck that whole mask onto a sheet of 040 Lexan. Spray painted it. Then I took that sheet and I put it into my CNC and I lined it up with those registration marks. Fired up the CNC, cut it out, and it cut out the perfect shape of the pre-painted part. That was the overcomplicated part. I didn't feel like I was going to be able to cut out the shape and then perfectly center the sticker so that it, you know, wasn't off in any way. This was the easiest way that I could think to get it done in a, you know, it was overcomplicated, I agree. But now I have a windshield that has a perfectly even black painted border that fits perfectly into my windshield frame. Pretty happy with that. Now, I didn't have the adhesive that I needed here. I asked Matt what he uses on his builds and he told me the some sort of no haze glue type thing. And I bought whatever he said, but it's not here yet. So once that is here, I will permanently fix the windshield into place, but it does look good. Nice and polished, a proper fit. Again, pretty happy with myself. Let's continue to move rearward. Uh, you will see that I've got a roof skin on this thing now. I cut this out of some one millimeter thick carbon fiber, some matte twill, just like I use for the floor and firewall, a little bit different thickness, but the, the same type of carbon fiber. I attached this in six points with some titanium hardware to keep it, you know, nice and flush and the weight down. I don't know. I do plan to add a winch point here on the rear section of the roof though. That'll give me a point that I can cantilever winch off of, which is a, a method where you take your winch and you bring it back and you kind of wrap it partially around a pivot point so that you can, you know, kind of pendulum winch the vehicle around objects. There's a number of situations where it's useful, but that is one thing that I do plan to add back there. I don't have yet, at least the one that I am going to use something to figure out here for the future. Obviously there's no side panel on this side currently and on the other side, it's the black acrylic. That goes back to not disassembling the vehicle yet, but I do have the carbon fiber side panels CNC cut. Now this is again, the same twill as I used on the, you know, the roof and on the interior side. There is an option where I could still get some forged carbon to use for the sides to try and match you know, the look of the other areas, but it's not going to be exactly the same. While I still may pick that up, it's not going to look much like these parts anyway, so I don't know that it's worth it. So if I use this, I'm okay with it. Or do I have more titanium cut to, like, to match the grill? Should I do titanium sides or leave it carbon? I didn't think of that till just now. Let me know what you think on that one. I don't, I don't hate it. The dash is not currently inside here. I did talk to Westmade. He was the one who I got the original model from and then kind of, you know, moved and shaped things around a bunch. And I threw it out there to him. I was like, hey, would you be interested in 
3D printing and detailing up the dash for me in this thing. And he agreed, I just haven't sent him the file yet. Let's see if he has time still before the event. If so, I might have a, a much, much nicer detailed dash than I would be able to do. But um, if not, if I forget or he runs out of time, I run out of time, whatever it is, we'll still get a dash in there. It just won't be as nice. The front seats we covered last week with the flocking method. One thing that I haven't talked about though is that I plan to put a rear seat in here. Again, for scale points. But I'm gonna do a bench seat because that seems more appropriate than what two smaller rear seats would look like in here. So I messaged James at Night Customs and I asked him if he had any bench seats available in some of his file sets. And luckily he does. You can purchase files from Night Customs right off of his My Mini Factory. So if you're in the need for some STL files, a great place to look. I've got that model from him. I'm going to take it and manipulate it until that it fits properly in the back here. I may do a fold down rear seat though to keep it you know, a little bit more covert get the scale points, but not necessarily have to have the look all the time. I also have this like scale rubberized mesh that I was kind of half thinking about putting over the rear section in some sort of more proper method. It fits the width of the cage really well. So if I just kind of make it fit around the tube work and things like that, thought maybe I'd go with that, especially if I have a rear seat in there. On the rear axle here, if you look behind that wheel, you'll see that I've got a brake rotor. And while that may not seem like the most exciting thing, these are from Brazen Scale, same place as my C2 chassis. Anyway, he's making these lightweight, simple brake rotors. And I'll be running stainless steel Vanquish brake weights in the front, but I didn't plan to in the rear. And to get the scale points for them, you have to have them all the way around. So I picked up these aluminum ones. Also, he makes them in brass. I don't think that I need the extra weight, so I don't plan to run the brass ones, but definitely a time when those could come in handy. My motor and ESC are on the way for this. I'm using a Holmes Hobbies Crawlmaster Magnum Stubby, same motor that I've got in my class two, and the ESC is going to be his BR Mini, same ESC that I have in the class two. So I'll have some interchangeability between the two in case anything catastrophic is to happen. As soon as the electronics get here, that's when I'm going to do the teardown of this so that I can get them installed in the places that are going to be a bit buried inside of the vehicle. Uh, that way I can get everything done, wired and tested before I reassemble the whole thing. Running the wiring, things like that could get a little bit of a pain in the butt if this thing is all assembled. So that's what I'm gonna try and do. Wait until then, do one final teardown, get everything in, test it to make sure that everything is functioning, then start reassembling and putting in all of the final painted pieces like my interior and my rear wheel wells, the seats, dash, everything. The rear of this body is the easiest thing to replace without having to mess with the front half. So that, while I have been working on it, doesn't hold up the show like so much of the rest of this. Now, as far as scale rules, we have talked about a number of it, like things like the front bumper having to be a certain width. Also, a part of that is that I have to have at least half the tire covered by the body, but you can use fender flares to make that work. Early in this series, I did show some 3D printed fender flares, and I also picked up some TPU, which is like rubberized flexible filament, because there's a good chance I'm gonna run out of time to go with the method that I hoped to, to fabricate the fender flares. So I can just quickly 3D print some TPU fender flares and get those attached to this body to get the tire coverage I need. That is a bit of a backup plan that I wanna have available just in case. Last thing with the body, the rear section here, I have done the design for the molds of it. This is the first print. This is kind of the plunger portion. They'll have the, the female side and this is like the male part that will go into that to create the compression mold. This one was the most complicated mold so far. It was like five pieces to do it. Basically what I decided to do was make this corner one piece will be a center section, which would be a roll pan and then a mirrored version over here. This one was also a little bit more difficult because of how that tail light goes in. It's in at a bit of an angle. And as you can imagine, as that piece is in there, if it's in at an angle and you can't pull straight out, it like mechanically locks it in place. So I had to design a slide as they're called in molds that 
this piece will come out separately from the back so that you can slide the part out without that mechanical lock. The first time that I've designed something like that into one of these, and I mean, it's only like the fourth time I've ever designed a mold in general, so. So there's a lot of firsts in just about every one of these. I need to get printing on the rest of these parts. Every, I've just been procrastinating getting these things printed because these prints take a long time and uh, I'm just always, I'm nervous about every one of them, making sure that they, you know, hoping that they work properly. I just, every time these things make me nervous, but this, there's, it has to be done by the, the next time you see this. Hopefully that whole rear is done in the next video. The front fender, I'll likely just go with the exact same mold design as I had on the other one and just get that done. And then we're left with the hood. And the hood is the is the big one. For that reason, the one that makes me the most nervous. But, uh, you know, no time like the present to put off doing it until later. I also still have to come out with how I'm going to mount the hood because we haven't done that yet either. So I'm guessing that I still have a couple hundred hours of work left to do on the pair of these and about a month left to do it. I'm almost to the point where I have to start cutting some corners, but I haven't told myself that I'm there yet. If you guys have any suggestions on ways that I should be, you know, saving myself some time, let me know what you thought. I Let me know what you think on the, the titanium side. I'm, I'm interested, I'm think, I don't know, I kind of like it. If I get it going by the end of the day, you guys see this video. I think it, I don't think it'll hold me up at all. Hope you guys are enjoying this series. I sure am. These are a couple of projects that I have absolutely loved just diving into with everything. Just throwing the kitchen sink at it as far as that goes. Um, and I don't regret any of it. Super pumped to be back into some super heavy fab. With that, hope you guys enjoyed this series. Hit the like button if you do. Subscribe if you're not already. Hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in two weeks.